be talking and blow with them. My nose is itchy. Ew. <laughs> Shalom, and welcome back to Earth Hack by Teenage Marie, and welcome to a bonus episode. And don't forget to like, comment, and to subscribe. And let's commit this time to God, and let's pray. Father God, we give you all the glory. We praise you. We magnify you. And we thank you, sir, for everything you've done, everything you're doing, and everything you will do. Lord, we love you, and we ask that you forgive us of sins we've committed, knowingly and unknowingly. And we repent for perpetuating those generational curses that you sent us down here to break. Lord, I pray that you open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and minds to receive the word that you would like us to hear today. Make me your personal conduit so I can say to your people what you want me to say. Me in the background, you in the foreground, this is about your glory. We thank you for the revelation, the confirmation, and the clarity. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, let me tell you. I decided to start calling these like a bedtime rant because that's what it kind of is. But I'm like, I can only record like when my kids are asleep. Okay. Um, so that's what I do because I have to be obedient to God and he, what he commanded just because my situation is difficult and is challenging, what he said is what he said. No matter how I feel about it, that's just what it is. That's just what I got to do. Eh. And I know this. So anyway, so this morning when I was doing my um, morning like affirmations and I was doing my prayers and I was standing on God's word, um, and I have a list of scriptures according to this, this, and this. We learned that at Harvest. According to this, this is what I ask him for a lot. Lord, do this according to this. So I was reading the scriptures um, down the list. And the scri scripture, I remember it exactly. Um, it was um, according to Galatians 3 and 28. But for some reason, even though... It said Galatians 3 and 28. I read it as Ephesians 5, 25. And I was like, wait a minute. I know how to read. I'm smarter than a fifth grader. Um, and, and so I'm like, wait. But then I was like, I got the number wrong too? So God was like, read it. Read it. So I read it. Um, and this is what the scripture is, and I'll insert it here, but I'm gonna also read it to you, okay? So it says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. That's it, that's it. And like I said, this is not going to be, cause we're not going to idolize kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage. Everybody talk about kingdom marriage. All the time it's kingdom marriage. No, no, kingdom marriage. We're not doing that today in these streets. We're not only talking about that. I feel like everybody is so obsessed with kingdom marriage. But before you can get into a kingdom marriage, you need to get into a kingdom relationship first. Hmm? 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 Maybe. You need to get in a kingdom relationship first first we're skipping ahead to the marriage part and we're skipping the part where it's like but we have to court and we have to get to know each other first because you're looking for your husband and we're not supposed to be looking for husbands in these streets let me tell you it says who he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord he who finds a wife, not you, unless that's what you're looking for. But you, you're not going to find, it don't say in the Bible, he who finds a husband. No, what you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to be working, working on yourself, working on if it's a business working on a business working on your relationship with the lord 
working on being a better person, working on being a better believer, working on being a better friend, a better sister, a better daughter, working on being a better mother. My God, you're working and he will find you as you are working. So that's what, but this show me a, a few different things because, um, because I think that was my main question. Well, well, then how will I know? And it's not the way that people typically think it's going to be. It's not going to be like, ooh, God, it's going to point neon, like, arrows blinking and be like, it's her, it's her, it's her. Some people might have that story, but let me tell you, God's like, no. You have to really look at it. And this is not necessarily for you, ladies, okay? It's not necessarily for you. But there are, this scripture is for you, okay? Just come with me. It's not going to be something, it's going to be in subtleties. It's it's not going to be like blaring. It's going to be uns, unsuspecting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like that where it, it kind of like sneak, sneaks up on you and it's like, hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> That's just what it is. But one of the ways we know to even give a man a shot through tea is because the love that pours from him, that he pours out, you'll be able to feel it. Okay, you'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to sense it, whatever. You'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to know there's love there. Okay, um, but I'm, I keep hearing sacrifice. The sacrifices that he is going to make. I'm like, that's your confirmation right there. That's who you need to be giving the time of day to, okay? That's who you need to communicate with. The one that is sacrificing something to be in your presence. When we're looking at this as Christ gave up himself for the church, that means he's sacrificing something that he wants and he desires for you. I'm just going to sit that right here on this table here, okay? And I'm going to let you, like, simmer on that, okay? But anyway, I'm going to link in the description one of the life-giving messages from Bishop Kevin Foreman and Harvest Church. It will bless you. It will inspire you. It will change your life. And thank you so much. This is such an honor. And shalom.